least you hate it now. But wait till you drive it. The Kivy and Friends Show. What it is, bro? Presented by Holly Performance, makers of the world's best air and fuel delivery systems. Featuring Rob Kibbe. I don't know how to put this, but kind of a big deal. Justin Corndog Cornet. New guy's in the corner puking his cups out. <laughs> and show producer Bernie McPartland. This is the DJ 3000, and it has three distinct varieties of inane chatter. We're talking cars. Do you feel this vehicle is safe for highway travel? Yes, I do. Diving deep on the topics that matter most. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> and the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your content. Turn up the volume. This is the Kibby and Friends Show. And that recorder's on. And three, <laughs> two, one. Kibby and Friends Show, episode number 189. Available in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Instagram, still on YouTube, although we don't really publish new to YouTube, and Patreon. I am your host, Rob Kibby, period. With me, as always, is co host Justin Corndog Cornet, period. Period. I'm here. Great. And in the glass booth of emotion with his guns, his bacon, his thinking he's permanent co-host from now on, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Producer, Bernie McPartland. Welcome, Bernie. And I can't thank you enough for that honor. Honestly, you have a hard job. Not a lot of people appreciate how hard it is to sit here and manage us two monkeys and still make it interesting <laughs> and get through a show like that. I appreciate you. Consider this mm-hmm. a through the internet hug from me. I did offer to pay more for that episode and you declined. So does that mean you're not going to do it again? (laughs) Past performance is no guarantee of future responsibilities. No, I appreciate it. (laughs) Thank you for doing it, but I didn't listen to the whole thing. I assume it was good. It was that good. I do remember corn dog sailing something like mailing it in. I was busy cashing checks. And I remember thinking, I wish that were so true. That would just be the best. Then I would be making money and not working, which is my goal. But uh, that's what we're trying to do is make this an audio pyramid scheme just for you. Hell yeah, man. What's the point of being in business if you're not going to roll in the dough? So everybody, welcome. It is now June. We have a Dukes of Hazard review for you. We have a little bit of fun news for you with Bernie. We have several weird segments. I'm debating how much or how little to go through. That's one of my many self-taught hosting tricks, Bernie. It's self-editing. It's not doing the pile of stuff in front of me that I prepared. AKA juggling. (laughs) Knowing the exit point, knowing when the bit is over. So important and so overlooked. (laughs) So uh, we'll start with the all important question. Today that we're recording is June 1st. Yesterday was Memorial Day. Hope you had a meaningful Memorial Day. Do you define the start of summer as Memorial Day weekend? Hmm. The calendar would say it's June 21st. Yeah. But in practicality, my world has always revolved around the school year calendar. It's baked into you from birth. Basically, when school is out, it's summer. That's still how I think about it. So what do you think? Is it summer? Yeah, I would say it's the same as what you're saying, Uh, especially once you have kids. You know, if you got away from it, then once you have kids, you're kind of back on that same track again. As soon as school is out, it's summertime. And summer's pretty much over when football season starts. Yes. And here, uh, especially in the Midwest, you definitely know it's the summer when the swimming pools are open, like the public pools. Yeah. And they opened yesterday. Mm. Now it's ice cold in them, but my kids still went. <laughs> Damn it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's summer. Although we still have a couple of weeks to go. What do you think, Bernie? I mean, Texas is super hot. So also for me, summer is the hottest part of the year, but it's the part I want to be outside the most. You guys may not want to be outside the most in the summer. I don't know. It's kind of the same if you have kids. It kind of goes by the school calendar. We don't have kids, but I did raise a full-grown teacher who uh, taught for several (laughs) decades. And so we did calendar by that. Corndog and you guys have noticed this as well, that how much shorter those, quote, summers 
have gotten over the years. Yeah. You know, it used to be three full months and that was summer and she was off work and la di da and let's go. Then it was, why can't you get off work? Well, it's because I'm not a teacher and blah, blah, blah. And that <laughs> finally shrunk enough that it was almost indistinguishable, you know, it just down to a few weeks. But typically real Texans, not to stray from the point, it's the first really humid day when the temperature is above 80. That's the start of summer because you just get a few reprieves now and again. We've had a really, really good month this month, but I think the real summer is coming. This past weekend, we always go up to my in-laws and do our, our barbecue. They've been doing it since way before any of us were born. I think they started in like 1940. And so it's just kind of continued ever since then. Everyone that was there said this was the very first time they recall it actually being cool. Cool enough to where you need to wear jeans, maybe a, a light jacket or something. And it was windy and overcast. And normally it's like, hot and humid and you know you're looking for shade this time we were looking for sun (laughs) we were staying close to the fire because it was actually pretty cool so what's the first day your air conditioner runs more than eight hours a day Uh, march (laughs) (laughs) that summer yeah there you go (laughs) welcome to the south all the way through december our furnace was on (laughs) over the weekend it got cold friday night so flip that sucker back on (laughs) You know, I'm sure this is part of global climate change, warming, cooling, but it does seem like everything since I was a kid shifted a month. Winter used to start on Thanksgiving, snow, everything. Mm -hmm. And now winter really starts like the day after Christmas here, at least. And everything has slid back almost a month. So like September right now, when the football season launches, that used to be, again, it started to cool down then, but now it's still scorching hot and you can get a suntan. I always forget, if you're a new listener, this is an automotive show. (laughs) Weather brought to you by... (laughs) Yeah, sometimes we just get in. This is an automotive pop culture show. This is junk food for your brain. This is not going to help you or make you smarter. This is going to kill an hour out of your week that otherwise could have been spent on something constructive or something destructive. (laughs) And you're doing neither. (laughs) <laughs> you're not going to be better off, but I assure you, you will be slightly more entertained. Now, the it best part be destructive uh, for the brain though, I would hope people are listening on <laughs> 1.5 speed, not one speed, you know, if they're trying to get something done, yeah. certainly. But, um, summer for me also does mean car shows. Mopars in the park. Corndog. Have you heard of the Mopars in the park show in Minnesota? I have heard of it. I've never been. It is this weekend and this weekend would be June 5th fourth through sixth, fifth through seventh, whatever that would be Mm -hmm. here in the Midwest. It's a big, cool killer Mopar show. I have a few Mopar ish friends and they all circle this on their calendar. They're in fact, all loading up here Thursday to leave for it. This is their good guy show. You know, for me, you know, depending on Mopar, it may be the biggest draw that somebody from the Midwest goes to for a Mopar centric show. And the reason it's called Mopars in the park is because it used to be in a park. And then it was Elko Speedway, and now it's moved to Stillwater, Minnesota. So it's continued to grow and grow and grow. I doubt they had it last year. I really don't think they did. It's a really, really cool Mopar show. When we get right before the Dukes review, we'll talk about Moparty coming up. There is news to share, most certainly. All right. I've only been to the Mopars in the Park show a few times, but it's everything I kind of expected the Mopar show to be. The swap meet area was nuts, just flat out nuts. Parts of every kind, every shape, every color, every condition. I don't know, 20 cars sitting in the corral, all with somebody leaning next to them, looking real Mm. pissy. You know, like, (laughs) what do you think of a car corral? And let's make a deal. Yeah, yeah. That's probably my favorite non Moparty Mopar show. I've never been to the Carlisle stuff ever for any make, much less Mopars. What is your favorite Mopar show other than Moparty, of course? Yeah, Mo Party really, you know, set the bar pretty high last year. So I'm really looking forward to that one. But I kind of stay kind of somewhat local. So I mean, I like the Mopars at the Battleship in Mobile, Alabama. It's always the last Saturday of April. And I like the big easy Mopar show in New Orleans. Well, on the outskirts of New Orleans. It's usually, you know, a few weeks before that. Used to, there was a, a really good Mopar show in St. Louis, like Mopar Madness or something. I think it was what it called. You know, it was working to be a really good show. And then it just kind of fizzled out to nothing. Hmm. And so I don't know who's putting it on, but it, it's, I'm sure it was, that had a lot to do with it. 
but yeah, Mo Party. I was really impressed with Mo Party last year. So I'm, I think they're trying to knock off, you know, the big Mopar shows, the Carlisle and Mopar Nationals and all that. So they keep doing like they did last year. I think it'll be pretty good. That'll be like the top one. If any indication is of launching a show in a pandemic yeah. and it being your first show, yeah, they're going to take over. <laughs> for, for, well, I can't tell you how many people, like local friends here, you know, that heard about it afterwards. You know, they kind of kicked around the idea of going last year mm-hmm. and then they heard how good it was. I can't tell you how many local friends are saying I'm going this year, you know, because yeah. they heard about last year. And I mean, if you think about it, there was something to do a hundred percent of the time that you're there never gets stagnant. So Nope. We will talk about that later too. But the one thing that I was extra glad we got to do, and this is not to rub it into you, Bernie. I know that you were actually <laughs> health wise unable to go, but hey, day off. <laughs> we met Mr. Norm and he passed yeah. away just a few months later. Right. I loved that he was still a car dealer, still wheeling, still telling us his stories. You know, we were trying to wrap that interview up for minutes, <laughs> minutes. <laughs> How many and times he did just, he grab the mic? He grabbed I, the mic and kept, he was like, I'm going to take over. He kept going and going and going. <laughs> really, there was no reason to stop. When we do these things, we're not on a schedule. They were there like selling signs and like, yeah, <laughs> we were just and, trying to be considerate of his time. There, you know? are, there were people waiting in line for an yeah. autograph from him. And, and, and he's just going on and on about stories that he's probably <laughs> told before, but they're always a little different. I, we're pretty sure most of this is true, but you know, not all of it. Probably. I don't know. That was maybe my favorite take other than meeting all the patrons, you know, Friday night of the event itself. That was probably my favorite thing. You know, we did something that we'll never, ever be able to do again. We go meet Mr. Norm. We'll have to cool catch uh, Herb McCandless next time. If you want stories, he's definitely the one to go to for stories. Story after story after story. And I usually see him down at the New Orleans show. He oh, comes yeah? every year. It's funny. He'll say, uh, do you have a trunk popper on that car? You know, any car, any Mopar, it doesn't matter what. It, he asked me about my black charger. You got a trunk popper on it? I said, no. Why not? Have you got cruise control on it? No. Why not? He's got like a little booklet and it's like a how to using like junkyard parts on how to put a trunk pop or how to put a cruise control. Just, you know, he's real quirky about stuff like that, but it's, he has great stories. I did meet this guy on the power tour and this is kind of related. He was a mechanic from South Dakota and he and his wife will call her Ethel. So they're cruising along in like a 79 L Camino and it is as old manned up as you can get aqua treads you know the <laughs> visor over the windshield for sun <laughs> and with uh, clearance lights well <laughs> uh, and they show me yep 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 i uh, took a tilt column out of an 83 and i got that in here and then i got my cruise and then i got uh, this air fuel gauge and all of these are nice things but it was a cobbled together car of many years that and he had figured out what year to get and what year to get so that he could make one good car and at no point did i ever think i want to do that <laughs> <laughs> but i really admired that he did and that thing ran like a top and he did you know the whole tour with it i mean this couple was in their mid to late 70s i would guess mm-hmm. they did the entire tour they were in matching like shiny jackets like the pink ladies in greece <laughs> you know <laughs> that uh advertised uh-huh. his his shop back in nebraska or nebraska or sioux city i forget which it was somewhere over by the iowa nebraska border you meet all sorts of characters at these shows, famous or not. Not Mr. Yeah, Force. So yeah. sweet. That's cool. And I'm only laughing because Anita and I probably will be that couple because it's going to be that long. You know how old I am now. It's going to be that long before the power tour comes anywhere close to us again. So <laughs> by the time it comes around, we will be them. I'm sure. It's the same here. Same here. It never passes through. Well, it does pass through here, but not enough. Totally different topic. I'm just passing this along. I launched a product. At some point, I would like to talk about what it's like to launch a product. And the reason I mention this here is because on the other show, on the Muscle Car Place, automotive business is like the second most favorite topic. The first, of course, being Dukes of Hazard stories. Duh. Mm. Right. Automotive business, how to get into automotive business, how to have your own shop, how to launch a product line, or how to be a big deal on social media. Those are always is the genre of that. It rarely strays from those central points. So like 10 years ago, prior to even quitting my day job. So this is early, early in my entrepreneurial career. A buddy of mine came up with this concept to make a baseball batting tee, but upside down. And this is the one few times I've had an idea that worked. It works! 
I finally invent something that works. Your ass works. I used a vacuum pump so that it would use suction to hold the T. And the reason I wanted suction to hold the T was so I could have just a little bit of suction to hold a ball. And the reason I want to hold a ball is because he was teaching his little boy how to swing. And he had this like Velcro thing that he could hang a ball from. And he noticed the way he was cutting on his swing was making contact with the ball where he wanted it, you know, center of the ball or below. And it was for a little boy, just super easy. He wasn't not going to tee over. He wasn't doing anything like that. 10 years later, we finally brought it to market. I can tell you it was the most exhausting, educational, frustrating, <laughs> eye-opening, rewarding, oh. return to frustrating experience <laughs> Pain in the butt. <laughs> that I can imagine. We, this is not an automotive related thing at all, but I use lessons that I've learned in every business venture I've been part of in my day job, like how to do design, how to find people that do design better than you, how to get a patent, how to do accounting, how to raise money. When you're doing a mass market product, you got to build hundreds of units typically just to get your first order in. You got to invest a bunch of money in tooling. If you can't do that yourself, if you can't do that locally, um, you know, in our case, you know, it's obviously just like the automotive aftermarket, you're going overseas for tooling. There's just so many hurdles to go through. At some point, I would like to tell you guys what that took because it was interesting for me and it was really hard, but I hope it worked. Oh, by the way, it's called the Magic T. I forgot to plug it. But if you go to the magictea.io, that's what it is. The reason I mention this is because it's kind of my secret life. Like most people, even where I live, don't know I'm involved with it. They saw me on a news piece once and I mentioned it. I love working in businesses with people who I like to work with. I finally figured that out. It took me years to figure that out. My preference is cars, but I can really work in anything as long as I like who I'm working with. I know entrepreneurs, you know, their drive is to go for the money and go for the opportunity. And for them, that's great. I wish I was that guy. I'm just not. I like working with my friends. So How would one spell magic T? M A G I C T E E. I think it's magic T.io is the website. Oh, here's one more thing. I'm not the website guy. Ha <laughs> ha. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the social media guy. I'm not the money raising guy. I'm just the engineer and I run the background of the business. I'm not the only engineer. Recruiting all the right people is a big part. Sometime we need to talk about that. It opened my eyes to what overseas work is like. You can't buy an American car today that doesn't have overseas parts in it. Well, you the know. thing about it is, is, I mean, yeah, this is a sports item, a tea, a batting tea for kids or adults or whatever. But the process that you've had to go through for you and your partner or partners. Yeah, partners. Um, four of us. You know, uh, it's no different than doing a car part. It is different, but, you know, it's a lot of the same process. If you're going to do, you know, a mass produced part, you got to go through a lot of the same loopholes that you had to do, except yours is for sports related items. Oh, yeah. All of the lessons that I learned would totally apply to somebody trying to develop a mass produced and really aftermarket car part, because the, right. what we made is is a fairly expensive item. It It's not that a consumer can't buy it. They sure could. But it's more likely that schools and institutions and right. leaks will buy it. It's this more is really cool. I'm looking at the pictures and the explanations on the website. You left out a critical part, though, I think. Uh, <laughs> looking for the cup holder in the base. Oh, that's Don't there. see. <laughs> there is a ball caddy in the base. Check that out. That little <laughs> yeah. ring that's inside yeah. there. You know, the other thing was we tried to make something that didn't exist. So how did Steve Jobs know the iPhone would work? Well, he didn't. Right. Yep. <laughs> it was a gamble. <laughs> and that's the other totally terrifying unknown. Baseball, as I'm learning, is a very traditional sport. So trying to introduce something kind of upside down, you know, so to speak, is hard, harder than I thought. There are other products out there that have tried to do it a couple successfully. But this, again, is a gamble. So, you know, hopefully six months from now, I, I know whether we've sunk or swim, but it took 10 years. To a lot of it's going to have to be just getting it out there and letting people actually use it to see how they like it. And then once they figure out that they like it, then that's when the orders should start rolling in. That's the hardest part. So now we have to tell the story. So we've had demo units out there. I mean, we've got, I wouldn't say 10,000 swings, but I would definitely say 5,000 or more. Yeah. I'm not even a good baseball player. You're a good baseball player. I'm not. My buddy Ryan coached me up to help me swing a little bit. 
it's just physics, right? It's just a ball in space, you know? And timing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. And I had to make a tee that would do all of those things and have it be adjustable in an instant, not fall over, you know, when you hit it and hit it cleanly. Work with a softball or a baseball. Softball is a huge, huge part of the sport. At some point, if people are interested, we can talk about that. And we might just do a business dedicated show because if you're trying to develop a part, you're going to go through all the same things, yeah. especially if you want to do mass market stuff. We had to work with a company that's a much bigger manufacturer in the sporting goods industry to build the business we want. We want a business that can grow and scale, assuming it succeeds at all. That's really cool. Congratulations, dude. That's awesome. Well, thanks. I will mention this at some point in the future, as long as it succeeds. If it fails, we will never, ever speak of it again. <laughs> 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 if you're listening, check it out. I'd love your feedback. MagicT.io is the website, right? Is that what you found? MagicT.io? Yes. Okay, cool. One listener email this week. This is from Jason Kearns, a fellow former Iowan. This is for you, Corndog. I already know the answer. <laughs> Hi, Rob. I just want to give you a heads up in case you haven't seen this. I recently ran across, get this, an episode of the TV show Alice with a Dukes of Hazard crossover. That's right. Alice, Season 8, Episode 1, Mel is Hogtied. Enos and Boss Hog appeared on Alice, in which case Boss tried to swindle Mel out of the diner. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's worthy of a Kibbe and Friends review, but it might be worth a mention on the podcast. Thanks and keep up the good work, Jason Kearns. So, Jason, I know for a fact we've chatted about this before, but it's always worth bringing up again. You are right, Jason. This absolutely happened. I'll have to look at the IMDb link that you sent for the date. But Corndog knows the story and maybe even has picture. Wasn't his Cadillac on it? Boss Hog's Cadillac was on it? I've never even seen the episode. I've seen snippets of it and I've seen screenshots, but I've never actually even seen the episode. But I noticed on one of the Duke's Facebook pages, you know, it's many of them out there, but one of them, someone commented the other day and said, hey, if you've got, I think it was me TV or antenna, I don't know, one yeah, of those, yeah. you know, classic TV channels. They said Alice is on at this time, and they're going to show the episode with Boss Hoganinas. They were just basically letting everybody know. You know, of course, I just didn't even watch it then, so I don't even remember when it aired. But it was here within the last week or so. I'm sure a lot of people got to see it for the very first time, and I still haven't seen it yet. I did what you did. I went to YouTube, and I searched for just the parts I wanted, and that's all I've seen. My mom liked the show Alice when I was... I remember watching Alice. <laughs> that's the song <laughs> i don't know of any other crossovers do you where the dukes of hazard cast or somebody from played that same character on another show Ooh. no i don't the uh, only thing i remember that i don't think counts is like that john schneider singing special well does a spinoff count because uh you know, they had Enos, the series, Enos, that went for like a, a season. I'm going to say so. it doesn't count. I'm going to say it's just a one and done a type drop thing. in appearance. Yeah. I don't really know of any others. Nothing that's ringing a bell right off the top of my head. Sure. The Barbara Mandrell special. I think it was Barbara Mandrell. Welcome home or coming back home or something like that with John Schneider. That's the only thing I could think of. I still remember that as a kid. Like he's walking home on a country road, Bo is. And. <laughs> Some people offer to give him, John Schneider, a ride back and goes, oh, that's no, fine. Uh, my cousin's coming to get me or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then the General Lee pulls up without a driver. No driver, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's driverless right. Driverless. And he goes, well, I guess Luke couldn't make it. And he hops in <laughs> and he drives away. <laughs> All of a sudden, the General Lee becomes Kit or whatever Suck it, it is. Knight Rider historians. <laughs> <laughs> Beat you on that one, too. <laughs> yeah. And that was an RT as well. If you remember the car, I've got pictures from when they were filming that. It had the really wide wheels on it, like the eight and a half inch wheels mm -hmm. and a small push bar values they built car. And I still had the RT emblem in the grill. I remember you sent me some pictures for a number of reasons. And did that one have like white letter tires flipped inside out? Was I think they were the, the manhandler tires the that Vase has always used. That's right. <laughs> Made by Lee tires. Very good. Uh, Jason, thanks for bringing it up. Always bring up stuff like that because that is like a casual side mention. But yeah. It's always fun. No fooling. Alice, the TV show. All right, Bernie. As I was talking about in the earlier part of the show, one of the keys to hosting duties is knowing when to quit. Knowing when to quit, even when you may have prepared a lot more than what's available. Mm -hmm. 
Now, yeah. again, this is just a bit. I don't hate Birdie on the news. <laughs> But I'm saying <laughs> we have other things to do. And Bernie, you are the man who has been in radio longer than the rest of us. The man that has the news that people need to know nationally and internationally. This is Bernie on the news. Bern, what's important in the news today? All right. Well, this from LinkedIn News and their editors. America's favorite truck is hitting new all-electric horizons. Ford says it's reimagined the F-150 Lightning edition. You guys remember this from the uh, 90s, the Lightning that came out? Yeah, yeah. That um, kind of sporty looking truck and all that. With its competitive $40,000 sticker price and expected lower cost of ownership because it has 40% fewer parts, it will, quote, revolutionize the way we think about what our vehicles can do. That's a quote from CEO Jim Farley. Reports say now that there are about 20,000 reservations for the electric lightning slated for sale the middle of next year in 2022. Rob, yes. you are an aviation dude. Yes. And we've got a couple of mutual friends who are pilots. One is regional, one's a major carrier. Now, knowing what we know and what you know about how a plane works, especially weight balance, on a small plane, especially how it works. Uh, you still fly a lot for business and stuff. Do you take that? Is that always in the back of your mind when you get in the cabin? Do you take into account what the cabin looks like, how the weight's distributed left and right, forward and aft? Or is it a, not a thought to you? I you assume trust? that they do. So <laughs> every now and then they will pull baggage off, especially on a very, very full flight. Or if they've got a few of the heftier people, they might, <laughs> hey, uh, would you mind us sitting in for class? Yeah. Not, not back there. <laughs> Thank you for the segue. Our average weight as Americans has been on the increase for years now, and the flight industry has been taking a look at that. This from Fox News. Under new pending requirements reviewed by airline industry publications uh, Air Insight Group, airlines would be mandated now to take surveys to set the standard average passenger weights for crew members, baggage, and passengers. They'll do that through random sampling and call on passengers to participate. Hmm. That means step on the scale, sir, please. The survey is voluntary, so if you don't wish to participate, the airline's advised to select another traveler at random. And I'm wondering how happy your female in-laws are about this. <laughs> airlines I, would have to I increase the average weight for female passengers and carry-ons from 145 pounds to 179 pounds. That's in the summer and from 150 pounds to 184 in the winter. I guess making up for the heavier coats and all the outer gear and everything that you bring along with you. Now, according to those standards, guys go up from 185 in the summer to 200 and from 190 to 205 in the winter. Hmm. No wonder that center seat feels so small. <laughs> well, it is small. <laughs> so I don't know what the calculated number is. I don't think they're taking the weight of the airplane. I could be totally wrong on that. That would actually be kind of cool if they have a scale built into the landing gear or something so they could say, yep, we're overweight. Weight and balance is very, very important to planes not falling out of the sky. That is true. That could be a problem. <laughs> I don't know if they actually are using a calculated metric. It sounds like they are from this story. Have you ever gone to like an old timey baseball or football stadium? You know, something built in the 20s or 30s. Like the seats are all so small. Mm -hmm. And they're small because yeah. that's how big people used to be. Yeah. Yes. We're bigger now. Taller, too. Yeah. I mean, we're just getting bigger in every dimension. So, I mean, if you even think about like antique beds, antique beds yeah. are shorter. Good point. They're shorter and they're not as, you know, dependent. They had three quarter size, which they don't even have three quarter. We uh, have a three quarter anymore. in this room I'm recording right now. This is our <laughs> guest room. And my <laughs> wife's grandma gave us a bed when we got married. And it's still here. Good and, luck and finding a mattress. <laughs> it came with a mattress. And it's we're using the one it came with. Yeah. Uh, I can lay in there almost. Well, I got to go in a little diagonally. <laughs> At an angle. Yeah. yeah. He's got it wrapped in bubble wrap. And there's the obligatory piece of plywood under it. But it's there. And it works. <laughs> no, Bern, I don't know. Let's just ask some of the uh, flyers that we know. If they know the answer. Yeah. On well, your lightning I, video, I did watch a YouTube video on that. What would you guys call the area under the hood now that's no longer got an engine in it? Huh. The boot. I'm, I'm campaigning for the <laughs> funk. The front oh. trunk. The front. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a YouTube video. Here's a telling point on that. The person who I watched does tech gadget reviews. It was not a car company at all. 
there's an optional model with a bigger battery that costs 10 grand more. I mean, like mm. the same channel would review like the new iPad reviewed this truck. Or the new calculator. That tells you Texas anything. Instrument. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah, a 85 bro. <laughs> At least they've got the name right for it, you know? Luckily, they got the Lightning name many years ago before all of that was, you know, around. They got that in their pocket. Well, it's okay to say long bed then, but would you ever say in an electric vehicle truck, short bed? No, because of the <laughs> obvious electrical yeah. problem that could be. Yeah. <laughs> what will we do? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good one, Bernie. Good. Deep reach, deep reach. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, you've been saving money long enough during this shutdown, and the Disney Resort in California, by golly, wants it back every penny of it. When the park opens this month, one of the themed area restaurants in the Ant-Man and the Wasp section will be stinging your wallet for their brand new sandwich. It's a new sandwich on the board at $100. Oh, <laughs> to be fair, ninety nine ninety nine. Oh, there you go. Also, to be fair, it should uh, feed six to eight guests or maybe just the three of us. Sounds tasty, though, with salami, rosemary ham, provolone cheese, and sun-dried tomatoes spread on toasted focaccia bread, I suppose. That's how you say that. Focaccia, focaccia. Focaccia, maybe. maybe. No. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's served with a marinara dipping sauce and an argula salad. And it's argula, the first sandwich I would stay away from. In reality, I guess, no, this is a point of contention. Now, you've been argula. to the theme parks. Thank you. <laughs> Three, I love it. Four, five. Six. Okay. You've been to the theme parks with the whole tribe, right? So a hundred bucks for one sandwich. It sounds outrageous, but you take the whole tribe up to the sandwich stand. You buy two and a half of three, what they got, three drinks, three sides, three desserts, three balloons. You're already in pretty deep, right, Dad? Yeah. When we have done this, and I mean, we just went in March. I budget this stuff so I know what to spend. As a family of five, we never, all five of us, get something to eat individually. We always buy two or three things and just share. That's kind of how we've always done it. But yeah, I mean, every day, eating at the park, trying not to stuff ourselves. Yeah, we dropped 100 bucks. Easy. Mm -hmm. Sure. And but those ice cream Mickey sandwiches, the Mickey on a stick, chocolate covered in yeah. chocolate. <laughs> those are, that everybody got their own. Those are good. <laughs> Super good. Same ones that you get at the grocery store for like four dollars a box you probably paid five dollars yes a popsicle it was more and it was better <laughs> say it again <laughs> mickey on a stick <laughs> mickey on a stick yeah, whatever it is it's like his head <laughs> it's all awesome. dipped in chocolate it's very thick chocolate but yeah 100 bucks i that might not be the worst thing slip me a dipped mickey <laughs> <laughs> on a stick <laughs> Not sleepless in Kenosha. This is from Inside Edition Digital. A 911 caller in Wisconsin reported that the driver of a Tesla was asleep as the car was traveling down the road at over 80 miles an hour. I mean, he's not erratic or anything. You know, the car is being safe. It's just that I looked over and he's sound asleep. The caller told the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department deputy. Deputy said uh, eventually they were able to flag down the driver. He was cited for inattentive driving, and his car was towed away. I wonder why it wouldn't drive there itself. Hmm. Oh, by the way, the driver denies that he was sleeping, but he has two prior reports for napping in the fast lane. That's crazy. really <laughs> Out so, for six, man, going down the freeway. <laughs> I wonder if that'll be a thing. Can you get a ticket for sleeping while operating? You should. An SWI. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Would yeah, that be no. what it is? <laughs> <laughs> SWI. No, it'd be sure OWS. <laughs> Operating while sleeping. <laughs> like a movie title. OWS. OWS. <laughs> well, speaking of the Fast and Furious, the uh, 1994 orange Toyota Supra driven by the late Paul Walker, that's up for grabs at the Barrett Jackson auction in mid June. Las Vegas, is that right? Is that where the next one is? I think so. And that car appeared, of course, in their first one. Was it in the second movie as well? Do you remember the wrong I person. Yeah. I, I know. I think it was just in the first one. Vin Diesel drives it away at the end because Paul Walker owed him a 10 second car. Yeah. yeah and okay. somehow yeah. or another, I'm drawing a blank now on which one it was, but one of them actually came back but was repainted silver. That may be the Supra. 
Now, this one looks like a, a glass of tang exploded on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good description. <laughs> and it has like the big uh, arrow or something down the side, doesn't it? I believe it has oh. something open here, funky or whatever. Some, I yes. don't know what it is. It's an open tab. One of those zipper mm -hmm. things down the side <laughs> of it so you can get into it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of birthdays. Cher celebrating 75 years on the planet. Gladys Knight of Gladys Knight and the Pips had a solo career as well. 77. Now, I had a co-worker at a radio station and everybody in the radio station and everybody outside the radio station who knew her said she looked just like Gladys Knight. It was the funniest thing ever because we just called her Gladys. <laughs> and she had heard it so many times in her life. She just went by that. It was hilarious. <laughs> the more birthdays she had, I won't say older. She was a pretty young girl. She looked more like Gladys every year. It was the funniest thing in the world. So happy birthday, Vaughn and Gladys. <laughs> it's 77 this week. <laughs> Bob Dylan recently turned 80. Brooke Shields turned 49. Tommy Chong of a Cheech and Chong, 83. I didn't think he'd make it that far. Really? No way. Yeah. Mr. T, 69. Supermodel Heidi Klum, 48. And Corn Dog's favorite, Buster Rhymes. Even that rhymes. He's just recently turned 49. And Al Franken, Saturday Night Live comedian who then went full-time comedian as a Minnesota senator for 11 years, 2009 to 18, 70 years old. He's Happy 70? Birthday. Wow. 70 years old. And Memorial Day birthday greetings to Clint Eastwood, 91 years old. I didn't realize he was even 90. That's crazy. Same age as my father, 91. Just different mm. birthdays. I have a string of Clint Eastwood best quotes. We can do them here or maybe at the end of the show. What do you think? No, right now. Right can't, now? Can't bring up Clint <laughs> and then just leave the people hanging. Yeah, I'm ready. He has close to 300 great, great lines. Here are about a dozen of them. Man's got to know his limitations. There's nothing like a nice piece of hickory. Oh, thanks, man. I'm high on life. Tomorrow is promised to know. You want a guarantee? Buy a toaster. Well, opinions are like souls. Everybody has one. Every gun makes its own tune. Nobody, I mean nobody, puts ketchup on a hot dog. Do you have any kids, Lieutenant? No. Lucky for them. With all due respect, sir, you're beginning to bore the hell out of me. Can I make a statement, McKay? Go ahead. Your mouthwash ain't making it. Marvelous. Right turn, Clyde. <laughs> Odd. One noticeably missing there. Did you pick up on which one was? I'm waiting for go ahead. Make my, my day. day. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? <laughs> Had to end with a 44 Magnum, the most yeah. powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head clean off. Want to like break an engine block? Mm -hmm. Good quotes, Burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Clint, and to you this week. And that is it. Good news. One of my favorite Clint movies is probably not a remarkable one. It's Space Cowboys. Just because of my love for the, the space program, I just love the movies where old guys wins. Like, they still got it. A little magic is still left in the tank. Like, Tom Brady won the Super Bowl this year. Elio Castroneves won the Indy 500, you know, two days ago. I like seeing the people who are supposed to be past their prime who can still cut it. So were you sad when Clint Eastwood died in Gran Torino? I was sad that he died. Were you old yeller sad or just <laughs> figured it was going to come anyway? No, neither. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of good lines in that movie that you probably couldn't run here. <laughs> I auditioned a few of those. Now let's stick to these. Yeah. <laughs> let's do a quick update on Patreon. So we did do our Patreon episode at the end of May, and it was a combo question and answer show and a Dukes of Hazzard review. And the reason I did that is because our last real show, quote unquote, was a question and answer show. So we slipped a Dukes review in there as well as questions and answers and gave away or announced the deserving listener donation prize, which of course was amazing. It was 10 Kibbe and Friends stickers as well as a box of stuff from my garage of parts that I bought but never used and didn't have the heart to throw away. And it was good stuff. And exactly one person entered. <laughs> <laughs>
So, Jeff Wilson, <laughs> uh, you win. <laughs> <laughs> By if default. you can call it that. <laughs> what, what happened here? It's good stuff. I mean, I've given you You're forgetting the other thing. The Oh, well, Forty dollars worth of great bacon. I was going to throw that out there if I had to do that to oh. get anybody to take it, but nobody said <laughs> I'll take the bacon and the parts. They just didn't enter. <laughs> so first of I'll all, tell you. Jeff, congrats, boy! You guys are in for it for June. I've already got a winner. <laughs> Some of these are things that I bought new twenty years ago, and they've oh, been sitting at the bottom okay. of a parts bin or something, but they're brand new. Right. I mean, they're brand new. I can't throw it away. It's brand new. <laughs> it's a hodgepodge of stuff. It's like O-rings and like a chrome carb stud and just forget it. Jeff, you win. Thanks for being my true friend. And if everybody else would like to join in on Patreon, we have $5, $10, and $20 options available. Every dollar you put in goes to keeping this show alive, growing, and thriving. At the $20 level, we absolutely do a one-on-one -on -one call with you. And after this show is done, we will be recording with Greg Hageman or Hagman or Hageman. Whichever he tells us to do is what we're going to do. So that's coming up there. You can go to patreon.com slash KF show. No fooling. Our June show is going to be off. The, I have a killer prize coming. It is not from my house or my garage at all. It is mm. amazing. And I believe we also have a quad host on that one, don't we? Dan Atkinson. Yes, we mm -hmm. do. Yes, we do. Indeed. Okay, we are ready to go to the Duke's Review. The Duke's Review is brought to you by Holly Performance. Holly Performance provides this whole show. I have updates on Moparty. Number one, Moparty is an all Mopar Holly show. If you've ever been to an LS Fest, if you've been to their Ford Festival, similar in theme, similar in quality. Last year was the inaugural one. We were there. This year, it's September 17th through 19th. It's at Beach Bend Raceway, right in Bowling Green. If you're a Corvette person, you know what? You can go tour the Corvette facility. That's pretty awesome as well. Here's what I kind of want to go through. We should go through this over the coming months. There are a lot of things you can do at Moparty, but if you're into racing, drag racing, autocrossing, there are many options that you can do and compete in if that's your bag. What I'd like to talk about today is called the Grand Champion Pack. And the reason why this is important is because it's only 150 bucks for the first 150 people to register. This is a first come first serve type of thing. You don't get a better deal by going through our link. I, we would like you to go through our link. We'll certainly send that in to track it, but it's $150. And here's what the grand champion pack is. So it's drag racing, autocross, show and shine, the 3S challenge, which I would probably call speed step, dyno challenge, and the countryside cruise. You're going to do the, all that stuff for three days in a row. The cruise is one night. The autocross and 3S Challenge are usually on opposite days. And then there's a full drag strip right there. You're competing against other cars. You're trying to win an actual grand champion in this section. Next episode, we're going to talk about the autocross and the drag packs, if that's more your thing. There certainly is a three-day car show package. There's certainly a swap meet, which should be even bigger than last year, I would certainly guess. And of course, there's yeah, spectators. 20 bucks. 20 bucks to go. That's all it takes. Yeah which is a really good day. There's a military discount in there. They have their own separate website just for this. It's called moparty.com. Just go there, moparty.com. And a little something more in these days of troubling times. Last year, they launched a General Lee. They had Jamie Smith there. They had Corndog there, of course. And then they had Jamie Smith in that order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Jamie exactly launched, uh, he put his uh, Crown Vic Lee up on two wheels, and then he did a jump. Well, Holly knows that that car is not a sign of racism. It's a sign of kick-ass awesomeness. So in that context, here's what they say. As expected, last year's General Lee jump went off splendidly. By the time Boss Hogg and Roscoe got wise to what we were up to, Jamie Smith had already sailed through the air, impressed the crowd, and made tracks out of town. But we've heard tell that in 2021, he and his orange charger, Bernie, we're going to need some music under this, of course. Yeah, he and his orange charger will be back in our area for more shenanigans. That's right. Stunt driver Jamie Smith will be joining us again for the second annual Mo Party. Hailing all the way from Appleton, Washington, he's got sights set on jumping his generally higher and farther in the middle of Beach Bend's oval track. Yes. Generally is coming back for another big jump, which is great. That's good news for everybody that listened to this show and really everybody that just likes cars. So MoParty.com is where you go. If you're a GM person, sign up for LS Fest. I believe it's just the week prior. If you're a Ford person, go to the Ford Festival. I think that's just two weeks later. They're all in the exact same location. 
Bowling yeah. Green. It's kind of a magical town. I would imagine that Jamie's probably also going to put the car up on two wheels again this oh, yeah. year, which, you know, I've seen him jump the car numerous times, but that was the first time I actually got to watch him put it up on two wheels in person. And that was pretty crazy to see how slow, I mean, he can go really fast if he wanted to, but he can go at a walking pace up on two wheels and hold it up. That was amazing to me to even see. It is a little perplexing to see how slowly not only can it roll, but turn yes. like he would turn, turn it left or right. Cause he's driver side up, you know? Oh, and the other thing too, is the track is banked. So he was driving on the banks down on the infield where it's flat and then back up on the bank. Mm-hmm. It was, there's a lot of stuff going on and he was able to just keep it up on two wheels without a problem. That's what she said. Yep. That's exactly what yeah. she said. <laughs> so with that, Thank you, Holly. We are on to the Dukes of Hazard review. Just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. This is season six, episode nine, Twin Trouble. She said a lot of things in this one. Written by Cy Rose, directed by Paul Baxley. <laughs> Original air date, November 25th, 1983. And if you need to know what really happened, here is the episode preview right here. Tonight on the Dukes, double dolls plus double dukes equals double trouble for hazard. Find us up a path, please. We're going in the same car. <laughs> this is a girl, all right. Wow, that was amazing. Like we've seen it already. Do we need to go on at all? It's all laid out there. Yeah, we will go ahead and continue anyway, just for kicks, because we still got 15 minutes to kill. So here we go. This is the IMDb summary, and it's the classic tale. Bo and Luke try to figure out how the same woman could be in two places at once during a daring jewelry store robbery. Could it be that the woman and her twin sister are experienced thieves and are counting on dissension in the Duke's ranks to get away with their plans? Because this is the one where they have twins. Right. Yeah. Here's what the DVD summary says. It says, what are you doing with my gal? Identical twin cuties and thieves use the Dukes to cook up an alibi. Okay. Both of those sucked. Bernie music, please. Here we go. (laughs) Here's my summary to quote the great Dwight fruit. I love a good set of twins. Randy and candy bro make their return to the Dukes again to once again play the role of twin sisters for the dukes to love on their names are get this cindy and sandy last time they were on the dukes of hazard like in season two they drove a semi of perishable goods if you know what i'm saying not a joke uh, it was a you know like lettuce <laughs> something like right. that that episode was called arrest jesse duke This very well could be the sequel. Anyway, this time the thieves use their identicalness to cast the art of deception. Then there are three wheelers as the B-plot that are used as police cars, and that's kind of fun. At first, as I was watching this episode, I thought this story must be pretty weak because Waylon does the bulk of the explanation at all times for everything. But then the more I watched it, I realized this is a gift. This is a gift. This is a leftover script from season two. It's totally just for entertainment. There's no point. There's no message. There's no deeper meaning. It's just fun and stupid. (laughs) Other than the lack of General E jumps, it's great. It's one of the few episodes where we see that Hazard County must have had rain, which is a little weird. I thoroughly loved it. Corndog, did you watch this episode? I did. I couldn't watch it on DVD though, because I think my DVD is scratched or whatever. It would not work. So I had to watch it on daily motion and it was okay. I didn't enjoy it as much as you did. Maybe it's because, you know, of the lack of generally stunts and jumps. And you would think, you know, being directed by Paul Baxley, it would be it would just stunt be heavy. Yeah. But it, it really was stunts. It had some cool chases and, you know, some couple little odds and ends, but it was really lacking for me. It was kind of cartoonish, which I know that's there again. This is yeah. the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, I mean, come I, on. I like stupid like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was okay. Maybe it's because the twin girls are back. So the gist of it is there's twin sisters 
and they are pretending to be one person. One of the twin sisters wears this red jumpsuit and robs a jewelry store in Capital City. And right. Luke Duke just happens to be there when she blows by him and he tries to chase her down. Just ironically enough, her twin sister decides to hang out in Hazard County to work on an alibi. So right. that somebody in Hazard County will see her at the exact same time that the jewelry store is being robbed and assume that they are the one and the same. Well, just bad luck for them. One of them runs into Luke Duke and one of them runs into Bo Duke. Yeah, Bada bang. of course. There you go. Magical episode. But the Arrest Jesse Duke episode from season two, this was the kingdom of cartoonish tomfoolery. <laughs> oh, man, did I love that episode so much. And in that one, like this girl gang of Jeep thieves. <laughs> drove around <laughs> and they took showers outside it was just an awesome episode so and bo they, was a peeping tom you know yeah, hey. it was a peeping tom and they like were taking turns targeting him <laughs> it was just <laughs> wonderful so here we are in this one maybe my fond memories of that one are what, <laughs> what really made me like it so much but yeah so these two sisters candy and randy they starred in a lot of other things i went and looked them up on imdb as you would guess, they're always hired to play twins right? or duplicates of one another. They were in a 1980 movie called The Happy Hooker Goes to Hollywood. Look it yeah. up. Adam West was in it, Batman himself. They also <laughs> starred in a movie called The Lonely Guy with Steve Martin. Mm. And therefore, that leaves me no choice but to play. We are the three. <laughs> just any, any excuse uh, that you can find for that uh let's see here i have a few notes not many car notes if this episode has a real downer it's that there's next to no good car stuff in it the hidden headlight ltd bad guy car returns it's black now we do travel to capital city which is another part of the warner brothers back lot right around the corner from the town square they're they're chasing cars through and you can see filming studios in all of the background scenes. No effort to hide anything, which I like that sloppy. Yeah, those production. big dome tops, you know, the studio, it's kind of tricky to hide it. The B story is that Boss Hog once again gets upset that Roscoe and Enos are continually wrecking police cars. Last time <laughs> to punish them, he found cheaper transportation in the form of horses. This time he gets them both two-stroke three-wheelers <laughs> painted white gumballs and everything and just like the horses it lasts exactly one episode what's kind of funny in this one is they reference the horses they go you're not gonna get his horses again are you <laughs> yeah yeah you know we've talked about that in the past when they actually reference back to a previous episode mm -hmm. very few times does that happen it's very funny some of the better scenes or more comical scenes are with the two-wheelers there's one very funny Roscoe moment when he's trying to get a confession out of one of the twin chicks, which I thought was worth playing here. Where were you on the night of August 4th? I'm not saying anything till I get a lawyer. Oh, all right. Where was your lawyer on the night of August 3rd? <laughs> <laughs> I liked that one. I also had a couple of Waylon Jennings voiceovers, and I'm playing these because I want you to hear the music. This one is uh, from this episode right here. Listen to the music. It's almost 11 o'clock. I'm never going to make it. Oh, yes, you are. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll have this car fixed for you, lickety split. Right here. Ain't that slick as blue mud on a doorknob? That holdup gal's identical twin is establishing. So you got this weird synthesizer playing. Yeah. <laughs> here is. It's the 80s, man. That's the 80s. Here's season one, episode one. Listen to the music. He got a rake off from moonshine, contraband, and even portable prostitution in two cruising RV campers. I don't know what that thing is, but it's far more <laughs> <laughs> redneck drunken. Yeah, that was sound more raunchy. <laughs> Other than that, though, I don't really have a lot more on this episode. Did you have any real deep dives? I mean, it's not remarkable, but it's just kind of dumb and funny. I mean, I really didn't have much to pull from on this episode. I did love the double pipe ramp jump with the uh, police cars. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about where they were constantly tearing up police cars on the very beginning of the episode. You know, they were chasing some random person and what was it? A Malibu or a Nova or yeah, whatever. Yeah, square body Malibu. 
they never show who that person is. But anyways, they make a getaway, turn around and come back towards Roscoe and Enos. You know, they do a double pipe ramp and that thing looked beautiful because it was timed perfect and it just looked great. And so that was really the only big stunt that I really liked. They rolled over uh, like a 67 or 68, maybe uh, Impala or Mm -hmm. Bel Air or whatever, four door, you know, the jumps, there was no jumps, not nothing really that I can really recall right off the top of my head. So eh, it was okay. Nothing. There was a car that blew up, but that was recycled footage. There's only one area that I don't think the general ever takes air in this one. Not even a mini jump that I recall. I'm curious. Did you find anything in your book from this? Because there's one scene where you see some beating and banging with a generally in a bad guy car. No. For those that are brand new, Corn Dog has this book, and we're trying to prove, for our own good and that of humanity, how many General Lees were left at the end of the TV show, at the end of the yeah. filming of the Duke's Hazard. Not when they were sold to public hands, but how many did they have at that time? And we're trying yeah. to make a list here based on this book. Do you have any references at all? The only thing that I see, I do see one General Lee that says body damage. It doesn't specify what it was, but if this is the same episode, see there again, we've gone into lengthy detail about how I kind of decipher what's what, and basically just whatever I'm seeing in this book, as far as like cars damaged and whatever, I try to match it up and then try to keep in the same sequence. Unfortunately, the book isn't documented by show name or I've got a October 3rd through October 10th. Yeah. Do you see any GL numbers listed? We've got GL 26. We got five quarts of oil, (laughs) oil filter and air filter and the fan. Number 32, then we've got number eight, had a axle bent. Ooh, eight is new on my list. Oh, I, is it? Yeah, it is. I believe that one was a hero car, not like a Wayne Wooten's car. It's just one of the nicer ones, because mm-hmm. I've noticed number eight was somewhere in the book. I, I remember seeing it mentioned that it was a hero car, not hero, but first unit car. Mm-hmm. So we've got number eight with a bent axle, car number 67 with windshield busted. Okay. Just from rocks or whatever. Did you have 67? I did. Okay. And then uh, on the, the 4th of October, I've got number 32 with body damage. Number 26 with nothing. And that's all I see as far as general leads go. Mm-hmm. Then on the 5th of October, I have 26 and 28. And that's all it shows. No remarks or anything next to the cars. And that's it. The 10th, I don't see anything for general leads. Okay. So on this episode, I have, uh, looks like five generallys listed new to the list as of today here is generally number eight. Didn't have that one before. Yes. Once we started keeping up with this, but you know, yeah, the book goes back prior to this. We started <laughs> all of two episodes ago, yeah, so, something like that. but we're also in season six. And I think our hope is that by the time we get through season seven of the series that we'll have got together a list. So why do we care about this? Well, in 1991, right? Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers had at that time 19 General Lees, kept two for themselves, and sold the 17 off into public hands. And those 17 still exist to this day. One of the two that Warner Brothers kept exists to this day. One of them is a clouded mystery. (laughs) And we think there's a decent chance that there were more than those 19 cars at the end of the series. But we've never had a way to prove it conclusively. So that's what we're attempting to do here. Yeah, didn't we? Uh, we made a little wager on the number of cars that were left over. Did you ever write those numbers down? Yeah, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Bernie said less yeah. than 100. <laughs> I was guessing like 30. Yeah. I was somewhere right around there as well. It'll be interesting to see what we find here. But okay. Well, what's your rating on this episode? Stunts, I give it a five only because they had the double pipe ramp. The show, maybe a six. I'll go higher on the show itself. Not the stunts was a whatever you said. I'll do that. Five, five. I liked the episode because it was dumb and pointless <laughs> and they weren't trying to teach me anything or make a statement. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I just need entertainment. <laughs> and I like the scene when Luke do gets befuddled by the super hot chick that cracks yeah. me up. I thought that was good. So for yeah, that, when he comes out of the truck, he's all pissed off and everything. And then once up, he sees her, he's like, oh, oh he's hey. ready to beat somebody's soup. And like, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize you're so attractive. <laughs> and she clocks him in the head with the door of the car. Yes. I'm going to give the episode <laughs> an eight. I liked it. Really? Yeah. I, wow. I, 
I don't need to watch it again. This is not a remarkable episode for that. Well, there's one scene at the end that I do like when Bo comes to Luke's rescue and you see the generally tear like across a field. Oh yeah. It goes off the road. Like it's, it goes off the not paved road, but the dirt road and it drops down a pretty good like embankment. He weighs. Yeah. And it's just a very like heroic move by the car. There is one sound effect that I grabbed. Did any hero cars actually have horns in them? Because maybe this is just the sound effect, but I'll, oh, yeah. I'll play this here and tell me if you think this is real or dubbed in. I, I remember hearing that, you know, it kind of sounded distant. You know, it wasn't like the typical, you know, just audio being played over the video. I mean, it sounded like it was actually getting louder as it got closer. You know, I thought so too. What? I guess the Doppler effect in reverse is it's getting closer to you, but but let me play it one more time. Bernie's trained audio ear will figure this out. And that's happening as the car is approaching you, Bernie, in a slide. Right. Absolutely dubbed. Absolutely. For sure. You think? Because if you listen to it again, it's got kind of an audio effect on it called uh, kind of phasing kind of thing, kind of a doubled effect which is very common in 80s music and 80s stuff like that. So listen to it again. It's not a straight horn sound. I believe you, but typically when they lay in the sound, I mean, they just lay it in like a sound effect and there's no editing. You can do that. That's easy enough to do that. Because I didn't think they do the effort. I am all trying it here. But you're hearing the car slide as well. So you're hearing a lot of noise in there as well. Yeah, you got ambient sound. You got the car sliding sound. You got the sound of the car. You got vocals you know there's people talking over it there's a lot to hide a lot of audio sin there to Mm. cover up so it's not a big deal at all to do that so do you think they actually made it to where it sounds like it's approaching you like they uh, tweaked the sound oh yeah that's not hard not hard at all huh i guess it just gets louder as it gets Mm -hmm. closer well Well, that's a great idea (laughs) yeah thanks burn sure appreciate your honesty (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, Byrne, what do you rate it now that you've uh, you've got audio input? <laughs> oh, did you see this episode? Absolutely not. You know, being the world's most favorite newsman requires a lot of time and effort. There's not time for trivial things like watching TV shows. True. Uh, what is your rating of our rating then? <laughs> You're getting a little sentimental, I think. I'm going to give you a six on your review of this review because... I don't think you're reviewing it on the merits of the show. I think you're reviewing it on the merits of we're nearing the end of the season and the whole series. And I think you're getting sentimental about that. And you're pre-homesick. Can I say that? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's some stuff coming up that I am not looking forward to. Oh, but you are because you're rating them higher and higher. You said it wasn't a memorable show, but it was dumb and stupid, but it was a good show anyway. It doesn't match. He's looking forward to little cousin. That's underwear on the outside of the pants. Yeah. You're wearing them and it makes sense, but it just is the wrong order. <laughs> and that's what this review is. Now, nah, whatever. Okay. Well, can't win them all. So <laughs> everybody, thank you for listening. This has been another unremarkable episode, I guess, of Gibby and friends. <laughs> Sometimes they're good. And I guess I'm getting sentimental. So says Burn. If you would like more of this garbage, go to <laughs> patreon.com slash KF show where you can pay for it and win stuff. And really support uh, good, good causes here. Next week, I don't know what the plan is for next week. I will be here for sure. I do like breaking it up with movies every now and then. And I would like to break it up all the time with movies. (laughs) So we'll figure out what we're doing next week. If you have any questions for us, send them in. If you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts specifically, that would help out. And visit holly.com to make sure you sign up to go to Mo Party or LS Fest or the Ford Intergalactic Festival, whichever is your flavor. Make sure that you go and make sure that you click our link to do it. Fellas, anything else we need to do today? Rob, you told me you had a dad joke. Okay, I do have a joke, but it's not really an appropriate dad joke. That's okay. Okay, so here's the joke. Put a bleep in here. It's only funny with a swear word. I can't tell it without the swear word. (laughs) Okay. So (laughs) a dad, there we go, uh, sitting in his chair (laughs) watching TV. There's a knock at the door. So he walks over the door, opens the door, and nobody's there. Until he looks down and he sees a tiny little snail who had clearly just knocked on the door. And the snail says, hello, sir. Good day to you. My name is, and before he can even get another word out, he knows what's coming. It's a sales pitch. He reached down with his finger and he thumps the snail. Boom. Pops him out of the yard. It's gone. Close the door. Three years later, there's a knock at the door. 
he opens the door and he looks down and he sees the snail and the snail says what the f was that all about <laughs> <laughs> three years later <laughs> only funny with the swear <laughs> yeah. yeah i've tried to tell it clean before and it never works <laughs> okay uh use that joke to your best wishes everybody will catch you later good night or good lay bye bye good lay bye, bye. later <laughs> the kibby and friends show brought to you by our good friends at holly performance click the link on our show page and visit holly.com for everything air fuel and performance related for your ride Connect with us on the socials and at patreon.com slash KAFS. See you next week. Later on. Now, what the heck? It's a big idea. You... What? Uh, are you in the habit of running from the scene of an accident? I'm sorry. I was just so upset. I didn't know what I was doing. It was all my fault. Uh, I'll tell you what. When it comes to winning, them Duke boys are sure vulnerable. Now, either there's two of them, or my liver's acting up. Now, friends, we're about to hear some snappy Bo Duke repartee. Hi. Howdy. You, you uh, got some sort of trouble? I sure do. I just got to be in Hazard by 11 o'clock to make an important phone call. My dumb old car just up and died. Just up and died, huh? Yeah. Well, shoot, I could uh, I could take a look at it for you. I wrote the book on dumb old cars. It's almost 11 o'clock. I'm never going to make it. Oh, yes, you are. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll have this car fixed for you lickety split. Ain't that slick as blue mud on a doorknob? That hold-up gal's identical twin is establishing her as being here in Hazard at the same time of the crime in Capital City. And meanwhile, back in Hatchapi County, Sheriff Floyd had responded to Luke's call on the CB, and Luke told him about his run-in with the girl robber. He got a rake off from moonshine, contraband, and even portable prostitution in two cruising RV campers. This car's gonna run you about 700, boss, and anuses will be about 400. <laughs> oh, no, this is the living end. Uh, listen, little fat buddy, now don't get your blood pressure up. Yeah, well, listen, my blood pressure ain't as bad as the repair bills on the county budget. All right, listen, Akuda, when you fix them patrol cars, I want the keys because they're going right into cold storage. <laughs> well, boss, if that's what you want. Now, it's a crying shame they're so larcenous. There's just enough of them to go around for Bo and Luke. Just uh, hush up for a minute. Don't you know that Sheriff Floyd is trying to drop a windfall into your lap? Ooh, I mean, listen, if we can nab that suspect, well, then maybe I can get her to let me fence them hot jewels for her. <laughs> Where were you on the night of August 4th? I'm not saying anything till I get a lawyer. Oh, all right. Where was your lawyer on the night of August 3rd? Uh, 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 wait a minute, Roscoe, you know something? I got a sudden feeling this little lady is telling us the truth. Luke, when a woman starts telling you whatever you want to hear, you're either in love or in trouble. Uh, I'm warming to a man. I'm warming to a nub. Yeah, you are a nub. No, oh, it's his cousin. He come from. You come from. Vehicles and cold storage. Yeah. Listen, how are we going to write tickets if we don't have wheels? You're not going to put us on those horses again, are you? Ah, I thought something like this might happen, and I thought of something better than horses. Oh, good. And cheaper, too. Oh, good. Come over here. Oh. Let me show you your new patrol vehicle. Oh, goody, goody. There they are. I don't think even you dodos are going to be able to wreck these three wheels. Are you kidding? You're talking about these vehicles? Mm -hmm. These vehicles are for children. Oh. Now, Enos, he could ride one, maybe, but not me. After all, I am sheriff. You girls are going to have to find another line of work. Yeah. License plate. And that's how the Duke boys solved the mystery of the twin beauties. Sheriff Floyd arrived in time to take over his prisoners. Here's a couple of cute little heifers. Boss gave Roscoe and Enos back their patrol cars. Them three-wheelers is way too dangerous for hazard. No, but no. Oh, goody, 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 drop. Just take that. Like this, Tom. All right. Never do say I never did nothing for you. <laughs> but 
most important of all, the Dukes had maybe learned something about trust, which I guess nobody is ever too old to learn, even in Hazard.